Okay, here we are looking at a very similar picture from the static model. But what is different now is we're going to let all the curves move. And in a typical year, each one of these curves is drifting to the right. Because in general, our population is growing, our technology is increasing, and there's all these reasons that our long-run aggregate supply curve is generally growing and shifting to the right, our potential GDP, as well as the other two curves. So what can happen would be, if we want to show a typical recession, could be that everything has drifted to the right, except that aggregate demand didn't quite keep up with potential GDP. And so our equilibrium actually ends up to the left of the new long-run aggregate supply curve. We're going to allow for a fairly significant amount of growth here on our long-run aggregate supply curve. But we also have had growth, I should mark these with a little primes to indicate these are the new curves. We've also had some growth in our aggregate demand curve and our production ability, even in the short run, has increased. However, when all our curves come together in their new uh, location, so what we could be talking about here is this could be year one. So then this um, set of curves these three curves all together here are actually representing year two. So I'll just put a two right there. So what we're saying is the economy was here and it's been growing and growing and growing and shifting this way and now we're here. So this, this, this whole uh, axis down here is real GDP. So maybe we used to be at, I don't know, nine trillion of GDP and now we're at nine and a half trillion. And so we've had this general growth, but where are we as far as an equilibrium in year two is to the left of the, um, of the long run equilibrium. So even though we had started at a position of long run equilibrium, and even though we have had general growth, including growth in aggregate demand, including growth in short run aggregate supply curve, and of course, potential GDP has grown. It's just that somehow our, our actual aggregate demand didn't grow enough for whatever reason to keep up with our potential. We have slacked off. We are not exceeding our potential. We're not living up to our potential, something like that. And so when we think back to the static model, what we would show was a negative aggregate demand shock. And we actually would show that as an aggregate demand shifting to the left. What we can see is in a more realistic model, aggregate demand did in fact go to the right because that is normal. That is representative of the fact that our population is growing, if nothing else. But it didn't go to the right enough to keep up with our potential. So you could actually think about that as the leftward shift, the fact that we didn't quite make it. And so that could be uh, representing the consumer's lack of confidence and consumption is down. That could be lacking businesses' lack of confidence and investment's down. You know, whatever the reason is, that's a more realistic representation of how we can end up in a recession. All right. Um, as far as getting out of it, um, that's not a big part of what we're going to do with this model, but just to remind us of what we saw in the static model, we would expect that um, the next period, as this all continues to drift to the right, that eventually short run aggregate supply curve would realize that we are at a lower price level here than we essentially, essentially should be. And as we realize that you know, prices are lower, that would encourage us to expect lower prices and adapt that into our expectations. And so as this all shifts next period in year three, we could see short run aggregate supply curve shifting enough to on year three actually get us to long run aggregate supply curve. But right now we just under, want to understand how this dynamic model is a little bit more realistic in being able to capture the nuances of the economy. The static model is really good at helping you understand the automatic adjustment mechanism though. So there's one more thing I want to show with the dynamic model. And that is that even if we leave out the possibility of recession, we're going to go from one long run equilibrium to another, that we could end up with inflation. And that could be because of the fact that we run the sorts of fiscal and monetary policies that we do. 
Now, I know we haven't really gotten into those specifics yet, but when we studied what will shift the aggregate demand curve, we mentioned things that are a result of fiscal monetary policy. So if you increase government spending, which is fiscal policy, you will increase aggregate demand. If you cut taxes, also fiscal policy, you will incre encourage uh, more consumption, more investment, depending what tax you cut, and that will increase aggregate demand. And monetary policy, if you lowered interest rates, that will actually encourage more borrowing so you'll see more investment. So these are things that we are doing for the most part, and so that will encourage growth in aggregate demand. So one of the things we're trying to explain here is where does inflation come from? Just for a moment right now, ignoring the possibilities of recessions, expansions, and all those shocks that can happen. So you have your growth in the economy. You have long-run aggregate supply curve, your potential GDP growing. You have your growth in aggregate demand, and, and we would assume you'd have your normal growth in short-run aggregate supply curve as well. In the dynamic model, we assume all three curves are generally drifting to the right. So in this case, I'm like I said, I'm just keeping us at one long-run equilibrium to another. But even with that, because we've had a relatively large shift in aggregate demand and a relatively small shift in short run aggregate supply curve, uh, each long run equilibrium is at a different price level. And so this is often a way to show why we typically have inflation. If, if we were maintaining this price level, we would have to have a smaller shift in aggregate demand curve. Um, and then that would that would result in the same price level. So that's just the only other thing I wanted to show with the dynamic model. So with this model overall, you just want to be comfortable with what the curves represent, what moves you along the curve, what shifts the curve, and then in the context of the model, when you put it all together, how the automatic adjustment mechanism works. Those are the sorts of things you want to take away from this model.